What's up guys, I'm going to compare five of Netgear's Wi-Fi 7 routers. They're all Nighthawk models. We have the RS200, 300, 500, 600, and the RS700. Now, four of these I've recently reviewed, and I will link those in the description box below. I'll also link the product links as well in case you guys are interested. And the RS700 I reviewed, I believe, over a year ago. So I actually retested this, reset it up, downloaded the latest firmware, everything like that retested everything just to make sure we were on the same page just because this one ha actually had been a while since i had tested so i have all those results right here so let's just jump straight in and i will mention that i tested with the following wi-fi devices which are much faster than the iphone 16 pro max so the iphone 16 pro max is a wi-fi 7 device but I don't believe it has the 320 megahertz channel width, so it can't go as fast as the other two. So this thing pretty much caps out at the a little above the 1.7 gigabit mark, where the other two can go much faster than that. So again, I have all the results right here. Let's jump straight in. And in case you guys are wondering, <laughs> this is my Cyber Cup. Cup. This is not a Nokia router. I do realize it looks very similar to that, but uh, it's here in case I need some tea. which I do. Let's get started. And these are the respective power supplies. So we've got the 200, 300, 500, 600, and 700. The 300 and 500 use exactly the same power plug. And the 600, while the smallest in size, actually takes the most amount of power, beating the RS700 just by a little bit. So we're gonna start with the RS200, but they're all very similar to each other. There are a few differences, but basically they all have the LEDs in the front. And the tri-band ones also have the 6 gigahertz in the front as well, as you guys could see, like, right here. But they're all, like, pretty similar to each other, essentially. We got the sync WPS button, LED on and off button. And the top, we got our little Wi-Fi info when you're setting up. We got some vents over here up on the top. We got the factory reset. We got the power on and off. And then we have a 2.5 gigabit port. We have three gigabit ports. We have a USB 3.0 that you can actually share your hard drive, an external hard drive within your network if you wanted to. And you would set that up using the browser interface. And uh, don't expect crazy fast speeds from that, but it is a possibility. And this thing handles internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits. We got the power port right here. And if you get the correct accessory for it, technically you can wall mount these but it doesn't come with that and that, that is an optional feature. I'm also hiding some info over here that it gives you some of that. So yeah, so that's the RS200. Then we move on to the RS300 and I should also mention that they look very similar, but they kind of get heavier. So the RS300 is a little bit heavier than the RS200 and I think it's just because there's more hardware inside on the 300 and as it gets heavier, there's just more things inside. So. Uh, even though physically they look very, very similar. But pretty much the same type of thing, except now this is a tri-band, so we have the 6 gigahertz as well, the same buttons in the front, same vents up on the top, same sticker, basically. Uh, different info on the sticker, but, you know, it's it's up there with factory reset. All of this is exactly the same. The only difference with the 300 that I like even more is the fact that you have three 2.5 gigabit ports. So the 2.5 over here, and then you have two 2.5s, and you have two gigabits. So... I really like the fact that it's more than two, it's actually three. However, two is actually technically enough because it could go in at two and a half and it can actually come out at two and a half, which is already really, really good. Cause some routers actually only have one fast port. So it goes in the fast port and then the rest of these are gigabit. And then, so you're pretty much kind of capped to that already. And the same USB and then same mounting basically. Very, very similar. So we got the 500 basically very similar, very similar, very similar. And the surprising thing was that the 300 had three 2.5 gigabits, but the 500 only has two. So they went back to two 2.5 gigabits. So three of these are gigabit ports and pretty much very similar other than that. Then we move on to the 600. And one other thing I should have mentioned is that the port over here says 10G, whereas on the other ones, it's 2.5G like this one. And on the RS300, it's there's two 2.5 G's on these telling you like which ports that are actually in use. So it's actually nice that they included that, but pretty much the same button, same vents. The top looks a little different. It's a bit of a different color compared to the other ones. So there are a few minor differences and it is getting heavier and then pretty much the same buttons, except now we have two 10 gigabit ports. 
So you can actually go in at up to 10 and come out at up to 10 and the three of these are gigabit ports. So in my case, my internet speeds are five gigs, so it would go in at five and come out at five. So I'm not losing any speed. And then the same USB and pretty much very similar uh, wall mounting. Finally, we get to the beefy RS700 and it still lights up in the front with the LEDs and everything, except a little. it looks a little more different than the rest. A little bit wider, a little bit taller, a little bit bigger. And I should also mention that it also has an additional port compared to the rest of them. So this is the only one that has six Ethernet ports, where the rest of them are five Ethernet ports. And similar to the RS600, you have the two 10 gig ports, so it could go in at up to 10 and come out at up to 10. You know, the same USB port, and you can also wall mount it as well. And this one looks a tad more like Darth Vader. I don't know. What do you guys think? Now, before we get into the numbers, I wanted to mention that the 200, 500, and 600, when I was setting these up, it wouldn't let me pick my same Wi-Fi name and password so all my devices can connect to it. Basically, my same SSID and password. So I could pick any other SSID, I could pick any other password, or I could change both of those. I could change the SSID and password, and it would connect. No issues whatsoever. So I don't know why that is. I don't know if there was an additional setting I need to change, but... That's typically not the case when I do, because I switch out routers all the time. And I'm usually when I'm setting it up, most of them just, almost all of them pretty much pick it up and work no issue. In fact, the 300, I did the same exact thing and this worked without issue. And the 700 also worked without issue. Now, the only thing worth mentioning with the 700 is that when I originally tested this, when I set up my guest network and I picked my same guest Wi-Fi name and password, for some reason it didn't like that and it wouldn't let anything connect to it. However, I did do a firmware update on this because it had been a long time since I tested it and I'm like, you know what? Let me make that guest ID. Let me just see if it's gonna run into the same issue. And the issue was still there, but it wasn't that bad. It was kind of like a lot better than before. And what I mean by that is that it wouldn't, so, all my devices couldn't connect to it, but most of them, like a decent amount, more than half, still connected to it. Whereas before, I think nothing was connecting to it from what I remember. So, and, and it was only because I set up the guest Wi-Fi name and password as my existing guest Wi-Fi name and password. So when guests would come over, they basically connect to that Wi-Fi. And uh, for some reason, the Necker didn't like that. But when I changed that to something else, or when I changed the password, no issues whatsoever. So that was the only thing worth mentioning and the only one that didn't have any issues whatsoever with either one of those was the RS300. But the 200 had it with the main SSID and the 700 pretty much had it with the guest SSID. So aside from that, as long as you use a different SSID, no issues whatsoever, no drops, nothing like that. So it's kind of like a pretty easy workaround, but just something worth mentioning. And maybe you might not run into that issue. Maybe I did and maybe you wouldn't because I actually change routers all out all the time. I have so many routers that I test, mesh systems, everything. So maybe it just doesn't like me using it as many times as I did, but it does work most of the time. So now jumping to internet speed tests, as you guys already know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds, unless of course, the router itself can't go that fast, which in my case, these three cannot, and these two can, because my internet speeds are five gigabits per second upload and download. So when I actually do a speed test on my computer via ethernet, I do reach my full internet speeds of five gigs with these two, and with these three, I reach the speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits, because again, the ports are actually capping my internet speeds. So if you have internet speeds greater than 2.5, or you're planning on getting internet speeds greater than 2.5, I wouldn't even look at these three, I would only look at these two. Now the Wi-Fi devices are a different story, but the ports still make a difference here. As you guys could see, the 600 and 700 are getting faster speeds with the 700 taking the cake. And in terms of the 200, 300, and 500, they're within the same ballpark of each other. There's, I mean, there's a few differences, but they're within the ballpark. Now to find the true performance of these routers, I need to do a local speed test server. So I make my computer into the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer and this isolates the router. So I'm no longer relying on my internet service provider nor the public speed test server, which can be busy at times. So local speed tests are typically a little more consistent, actually a lot more consistent. And I, I have a whole tutorial on how to set this up. I'll link that down below as well. 
So looking at these speeds, there's definitely an improvement in speeds throughout. But the one thing worth mentioning just overall, because I test so many routers, is I have never seen a router go as fast, have an upload speed as fast as the RS700. And I tested that. I got 4.17, close to 4.2 gigabits per second. There was one time, I think I've seen it once or twice where the download exceeded four, but I don't think I've ever, I, I mean, during the speed test, it actually reached four point, it passed 4.2, but it, it kind of takes an average of basically, you know, the slower and the faster. And it was like, oh, 4.178. And I was just like, wow, it was so crazy that I actually screenshotted that and posted it on X just just like, wow, just look at these speeds. It was like ridiculously fast. But um, even with those speeds, it's still within the ballpark of the RS600. So, I mean, a little bit faster on the, I mean, faster on the upload, but within the ballpark for the download. And again, similar type of thing with the 200 through the 500. You know, they're all within the same speeds. And pretty much it looks like, you know, the 300, and 500 are closer to capping to those 2.5 gigabit speeds versus the 200 is kind of not quite capping at the 2.5 gigabit speed. So it's, you know, like 2.27 and, you know, two. Still very, very fast, but not quite as fast. Next, we get to range test and I test up to 100 feet. It can go further than that in my case. However, I do cap my testing at 100 feet. So range will vary drastically by location essentially the more obstructions you have typically the less range you're going to get so if you're in between floors thick walls things like that all of this stuff can negatively impact your range it's also not recommended to put routers inside enclosed spaces or very close to other electronics all of this stuff can really negatively impact your range so at 20 feet away inside my place again because all of these are tested with the same exact environments we do see a drop in speeds but with some more than others and it's really the 600 and 700 the upload speeds that are dropping more more because it's actually dropping because it started out so high to begin with it was so fast that there's really a lot of room to drop and then at 50 feet away outside my place this is when they're all still flying very very fast speeds however it looks like the 600 and 700 are still doing the best overall, which I would expect just because they are more powerful, but the speeds are actually getting closer in general to each other. And at 100 feet across the street, they all still have very, very usable numbers, but some are still better than others with the RS700 taking the cake. But all of them did fairly well for the range test. Very, very usable pretty much throughout. Now for setup and configuration, you have two options. One, you can use the Nighthawk app, which is available both on iOS and on Android. Two, you could use the browser interface and not get the app if you don't want to. So if you want to use the browser interface, you basically need a computer hooked up to these via Ethernet. And you just go to routerlogin.net on the computer, or you could go to the default gateway IP address, which happens to be 192.168.1.1. And then it asks you for the default admin and password, which happens to be admin and password. And basically you, you log in and, it, and you could, you pretty much there's an option that says I don't have a compatible phone. If you click on that, it'll guide you through the setup process. So you could set it up that way as well. And I should also mention that with the browser interface, there's actually way more options than there is with the Nighthawk app. And with some stuff, you actually have to go to the browser interface to set it up. One of them being if you want to share an external hard drive on your network, you actually have to set it up with the browser interface. But the Nighthawk app, let's talk about that a little bit. So the Nighthawk app is a very simplified app and they kind of did it, I feel like they did it like that on purpose just to make it very, very simple to set up and very simple to use. So you pretty much pick your Wi-Fi name and password. You could set up your guest Wi-Fi info. You could do a speed test. You can see which devices are connected. The Netgear Armor is there if you want that subscription. They have the basic parental controls. They also have additional parental controls that does require a subscription a subscription because the basic parental controls are just pause and unpause essentially and uh, you could do firmware updates and things like that within the Nighthawk app so it's pretty like it's very compact and it's very very simplified now if you want to tinker with this you go to the browser interface all of those op options are pretty much in the browser interface as well in addition to that 
You could change your LED options if you want, even though you could do it with the button in the front as well. You can do, you can set a Wi-Fi schedule to turn off Wi-Fi during certain times if you want to do that. You can block certain sites if you want to do that. You could set up VPN if you want to do that. You could set up a VLAN. You could do, there's a lot more stuff that you could really customize. You could uh, save your settings. You could reload them. You could play with it. There's really a lot more in the browser interface that you could play with. So now it's time for me to pick a winner. And honestly, I'm actually going to pick two winners just, just to kind of keep price in mind. So I would say if you have internet suites of up to 2.5 gigabits, the router that I would pick would be the RS300 only because you have the three 2.5 gigabit ports and also because it's a tri-band. So that's the advantage it has over the RS200 because it's a dual band. So the tri-band does make a difference. However, the RS200 is still very, very fast. In fact, it actually did better than what I was anticipating, especially for the price. But I would, I would pay the little bit extra and get the 300 from the 200. Not, if, if you want that additional boost, basically. And from the overall, like the performance ones, I'm going to have to pick the 700 just because the fact that when I see a router that goes over 4 gigabits on Wi-Fi, and this one got close to 4.2 on the upload, I was just like, wow, how can it be this fast? And the fact that it got over gigabit at 100 feet away, that was also pretty amazing. So overall performance wise, 700 is the king. And obviously it would be, it is the highest spec one. It also costs the most as well. So, but all of these are fantastic. And I, I can honestly, I, I don't want to say will, but I can change my mind based on its price. If one is on sale versus the other, but honestly, all of these are fantastic router so let me know what you guys think which one do you guys think is the winner and uh, which one do you guys have which one you guys are thinking about getting and yeah just genuinely curious thank you guys for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one